Imagine feeling an invisible barrier every time you attempt the most intimate connection, a barrier so strong it causes discomfort, pain, and frustration. This isn't just a scenario for some, it's a daily reality for individuals living with vaginismus. Today, we're shedding light on a condition that's often shrouded in silence, yet affects many more than you might think. From understanding its causes and symptoms to exploring effective treatments, we're diving deep into the world of vaginismus. Whether you're seeking answers for yourself or trying to support someone close to you, this journey is about uncovering truths, breaking down barriers, and finding pathways to healing and connection. I am V, and welcome to the Best Health Channel on YouTube, where we talk about everything related to your health and well-being. Sit tight and watch this video to the end, and do not forget to like and subscribe. Vaginismus, a term that might not be widely known, describes a condition where there's involuntary tightness of the vaginal muscles whenever penetration is attempted. It's like the body's automatic response to protect itself. But in this case, it happens without the individual wanting it to. This can make any form of vaginal penetration, whether for sexual intercourse, tampon insertion, or even a gynecological exam, uncomfortable, difficult, or downright impossible. But what really goes on? Imagine the vaginal muscles acting like a tightly clenched fist. In vaginismus, these muscles contract, causing the vaginal opening to narrow significantly or close off completely. It's not about a lack of desire or willingness, but a reflex that the individual has little to no control over. This condition varies in severity. For some, it might cause mild discomfort, while for others, the mere anticipation of penetration can trigger intense pain. It's essential to recognize that vaginismus is more than just a physical reaction. It has emotional and psychological dimensions as well. People dealing with vaginismus often experience feelings of inadequacy, anxiety, and frustration, which can further compound the problem. The question of what causes vaginismus is complex, as it often stems from a combination of physical, psychological, and environmental factors, making it a multifaceted condition that can vary greatly from one individual to another. Physical causes. Medical conditions. Certain medical conditions, such as infections like yeast infections or UTIs, menopause, or conditions that cause pain during intercourse, such as endometriosis, can lead to vaginismus by making sexual activity painful or uncomfortable. Pelvic floor dysfunction problems with the pelvic floor muscles, which support the uterus, bladder, and rectum, can also contribute. If these muscles are too tight, it can result in pain that leads to vaginismus. Psychological causes, anxiety and stress. Anxiety, stress, and fear about sex or penetration can trigger the body's fight-or-flight response, causing the vaginal muscles to tighten. Trauma, a history of sexual abuse or trauma, is a significant factor for many, leading to an involuntary physical response during sexual activity. Cultural or religious backgrounds, backgrounds that emphasize virginity or have strict beliefs about sex, can contribute to feelings of guilt or anxiety surrounding sexual activities. Environmental causes Relationship issues, problems in a relationship, lack of trust or communication issues can manifest physically, affecting sexual health and potentially leading to conditions like vaginismus. Lack of sexual education, misinformation, or a lack of understanding about sex can lead to fears and anxieties about penetration. Understanding the causes of vaginismus is crucial for addressing it effectively. It's not about placing blame, but about recognizing the diverse factors that can contribute to the condition. Vaginismus can understandably lead to concerns about pregnancy and childbirth as these experiences inherently involve vaginal penetration, whether through conception or the delivery process itself. Here's how vaginismus can intersect with these aspects of reproductive health. Impact on pregnancy. Conception. Vaginismus can make vaginal intercourse, a common method of conception, challenging or painful. However, it's important to note that there are alternative methods to achieve pregnancy such as artificial insemination that do not require vaginal penetration. Consulting with a fertility specialist or a gynecologist can provide options and support tailored to an individual's or couple's needs. Pregnancy concerns. For those with vaginismus who become pregnant, the condition does not directly affect the course of the pregnancy. However, the anticipation of vaginal exams during prenatal care and the delivery process might cause anxiety or distress. Impact on childbirth. Labor and delivery. Many wonder if vaginismus will complicate vaginal delivery. It's essential to understand that the circumstances of childbirth, a dynamic and hormone-driven process, differ significantly from other contexts in which vaginal penetration occurs. During childbirth, the body produces hormones like relaxin, which help to relax and stretch the pelvic muscles and tissues. 
Additionally, the intense contractions of labor are distinct from the involuntary muscle contractions characteristic of vaginismus. Communication with healthcare providers. Open communication with obstetricians, midwives, and other healthcare providers about a history of vaginismus is crucial. They can offer guidance, adjust care plans, and provide support to address concerns about vaginal exams and delivery. In some cases, creating a birth plan that includes these considerations can help alleviate anxiety. Options for delivery. While many individuals with vaginismus can and do have vaginal deliveries, some may opt for a cesarean section, C-section, for various reasons, including concerns related to vaginismus. Decisions about the mode of delivery should be made in consultation with healthcare providers considering the health and preferences of the mother and baby. In summary, while vaginismus presents unique considerations regarding pregnancy and childbirth, there are pathways to managing these challenges. With supportive care, open communication, and informed choices, individuals with vaginismus can navigate pregnancy and childbirth with confidence and support. If you are still watching up to this point, it means you find this video interesting, so consider liking and subscribing to the channel for my informative videos like this. Moving on to diagnosis. Diagnosing vaginismus involves a careful and compassionate approach, as the condition not only affects physical health, but also carries emotional and psychological implications. The diagnosis process aims to understand the individual's symptoms, rule out other medical conditions, and provide a pathway to effective treatment and support. Steps in Diagnosing Vaginismus Medical History Review the process usually starts with a detailed discussion about the patient's medical history, sexual history, and any symptoms experienced during penetration attempts. This conversation is crucial for establishing trust and understanding the context of the condition. Gynecological examination. A physical examination may be recommended to rule out other conditions that could cause pain during intercourse, such as infections or anatomical abnormalities. However, if attempting an examination triggers discomfort or anxiety, healthcare providers may rely on patient descriptions of their symptoms instead. Pelvic Floor Assessment Some specialists may conduct a pelvic floor assessment to evaluate the strength and function of the pelvic floor muscles. This can help in identifying involuntary contractions or tightness associated with vaginismus. Psychological Evaluation Given the significant role of psychological factors in vaginismus, a healthcare provider might also explore emotional or psychological aspects contributing to the condition. This could involve discussing any history of trauma, anxiety, or other emotional concerns. Ruling out other conditions. It's important to differentiate vaginismus from other conditions that cause pain during sexual intercourse, such as vulvodynia, chronic vulvar pain, or endometriosis. This distinction is crucial for tailoring the treatment effectively. Addressing whether vaginismus can be cured is important for those affected by the condition, as it touches on hope, treatment outcomes, and the journey towards sexual health and well-being. The answer is nuanced, reflecting the complex nature of vaginismus, which involves physical, emotional, and sometimes relational components. Can vaginismus be cured? Yes, many individuals with vaginismus do find relief and significantly improve through treatment. The term cure might imply a complete and permanent resolution of symptoms for everyone, which can vary depending on the individual situation, the underlying causes, and their response to treatment. However, with the right combination of therapies, many people with vaginismus can reach a point where they experience little to no pain during penetration and can engage in sexual activity comfortably and enjoyably. The treatment of vaginismus is multifaceted, reflecting the condition's complex nature, which intertwines physical, psychological, and sometimes social elements. Successful management often requires a personalized approach tailored to each individual's specific situation and needs. Here's an overview of the primary treatment options available. Education and counseling. Understanding vaginismus is a crucial first step. Education about sexual anatomy and the nature of vaginismus can demystify the condition, alleviate fears, and reduce the anxiety surrounding penetration. Counseling or therapy, especially with therapists specializing in sexual health or relationships, can address any underlying psychological issues such as fear, trauma, or anxiety. Couples therapy may also be beneficial if the condition is affecting a relationship. Physical therapy. Pelvic floor physical therapy is a cornerstone of treatment for vaginismus. A physical therapist specializing in pelvic health can teach exercises that relax and stretch the pelvic floor muscles, reducing involuntary contractions. 
Techniques might include biofeedback, manual therapy, and exercises to improve muscle control and reduce pain. Dilator therapy. Under the guidance of a healthcare provider, vaginal dilators can be used to gradually accustom the vaginal muscles to insertion. Starting with a small dilator and slowly progressing to larger sizes can help desensitize the vaginal area and build comfort with penetration. Dilator therapy is often done alongside pelvic floor therapy. Medications. While there are no medications specifically approved for treating vaginismus, certain medications may be used adjunctively to address symptoms or related conditions. For instance, topical anesthetics might temporarily relieve pain, or anti-anxiety medications could help manage anxiety impacting the condition. Botox injections. In some cases, Botox injections into the pelvic floor muscles are used as part of the treatment plan. Botox can temporarily paralyze the muscles, preventing them from contracting involuntarily and allowing more comfortable penetration. This treatment is typically considered when other methods haven't been effective and is performed under the guidance of a specialist. Mindfulness and relaxation techniques. Practices like mindfulness, meditation, and yoga can help manage the stress and anxiety associated with vaginismus. Learning relaxation techniques can also aid in reducing pelvic floor muscle tension. It's crucial for individuals with vaginismus to proceed at their own pace, guided by comfort and consent. Recovery and improvement vary from person to person, and what works for one individual may not work for another. Therefore, a supportive, patient, and understanding approach from healthcare providers, partners, and the individuals themselves is vital. The journey through vaginismus treatment is not only about overcoming physical symptoms, but also about healing emotionally and strengthening relationships. With the right combination of treatments, support, and self-compassion, many individuals can manage or overcome vaginismus, leading to a healthier and more fulfilling sexual life. Exercises and techniques aimed at relaxing the pelvic floor muscles and easing the symptoms of vaginismus can be incredibly effective parts of a treatment plan. These methods focus on reducing muscle tension, increasing comfort with penetration, and ultimately helping individuals gain more control over their bodies. Here are some commonly recommended exercises and techniques. Kegel exercises with a twist. While Kegel exercises are typically associated with tightening the pelvic floor, they can also be adapted to help with relaxation. The key is to focus on the releasing phase of the exercise. Tightening the muscles is only half of the exercise. Learning how to consciously relax them is equally important. This practice can help individuals differentiate between the sensations of tension and relaxation. Pelvic floor muscle stretching. Gentle stretching exercises can help relax and lengthen the pelvic floor muscles. Techniques may include deep squatting or butterfly stretches, which can be particularly helpful when done regularly. These stretches can reduce the overall tension in the pelvic area. Breathing techniques. Deep, diaphragmatic breathing can facilitate muscle relaxation and reduce anxiety. By focusing on slow, deep breaths, individuals can help calm the nervous system and decrease involuntary muscle contraction. This technique is especially useful during attempts at penetration, whether using dilators, tampons, or during intercourse. Yoga and Pilates Yoga and Pilates can improve awareness of the pelvic region, increase flexibility, and promote relaxation. Specific poses and exercises that focus on the pelvic area can be particularly beneficial for individuals with vaginismus. Partnered Exercises and Communication For those in relationships, practicing communication exercises can be helpful. This includes discussing boundaries, expressing comfort levels, and guiding partners on how to support the relaxation process. Incorporating these exercises and techniques into a comprehensive treatment plan for vaginismus can lead to significant improvements. It's important for individuals to work at their own pace and consult with healthcare providers to tailor these methods to their specific needs. With patience and consistency, many find these practices instrumental in overcoming the challenges of vaginismus. As we've navigated through the intricacies of vaginismus together, from understanding its causes and symptoms to exploring the myriad of treatment options, it's clear that this condition, though challenging, is not insurmountable. The journey towards overcoming vaginismus is as much about understanding and addressing the physical aspects as it is about healing emotionally and building supportive relationships. For those experiencing vaginismus, remember, you're not alone. With the right approach, a combination of education, tailored therapy, and a supportive network, overcoming the barriers of vaginismus is achievable. Progress may be gradual and there may be setbacks along the way, but each step forward is a step towards reclaiming your sexual health and intimacy.
If this journey resonates with you, or if you know someone who could benefit from this information, don't hesitate to share this video. Your support can make a significant difference in spreading awareness and offering hope to those navigating through vaginismus. And if you're seeking more insights into health and wellness topics, consider subscribing to our channel. Your engagement helps us grow a community focused on understanding, healing, and empowering. Don't forget to like this video if you found it informative. It helps more people find this resource. Remember, seeking professional help and guidance is a critical step in managing vaginismus. There's a path forward, and it's paved with knowledge, understanding, and compassion. Thank you for watching, and we look forward to seeing you in the next video.